when, when you're introduced like that, you start wondering what you're going to say. But allow me to touch on a few things. And uh, first, uh, all protocols, um, the Kenya University Vice Chancellor, Professor Paul Wainaina, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Finance and Development, Professor Godfrey Mse, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics, uh, Professor Washeke Wanjoy, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Administration, Professor Paul Okemo. Very important for me to mention um, Dr. Daniel Muthe, Director, Career Development and Mentoring Programs. I'll speak later a little bit about why a special mention. Uh, all Kenyatta University members of faculty, all Kenyatta University students uh, and alumni present. We have a number of colleagues from KCB uh, present. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. I think um, with your permission, uh, Vice Chancellor, I'll swing between the formal statements uh, naturally that my team will give me to read in such occasion, as well as just weave it with a few of my own comments. I'd like, I'd like to thank you for this, for this opportunity, it's humbling to come to an entity uh, like Kenyatta University, but most importantly, to speak to students who have aspirations like I had at a point when I joined Moy University as a vice chancellor mentioned. What I think is very important is never to lose the reason why you walked through that door. And to date, that is what drives me. And I'll say upfront, the first one was to get my family out of the poverty line. It's nothing personal. Coming out of Marsabit, there might be some people from Marsabit here. Graduating from Laisami's primary school to join Mangu High School. And maybe a little bit of Pata Potea to join Moi University. The least that you want to do it is to do something for your own family, even before you think about something else. So for whatever reason that you joined uh, Kenyatta University, I just want you to remind yourself when you came across and went, came through that great gate, never forget that. And maybe there is one of you who didn't know why, please find it. Because at the end of the day, what is very important is finding your true north. You can be in the midst of so many children, and I'm always reminded about Mang High School, which is amazing. But the son of a nomad who never went to school, studied with the son of a minister, but all of us were same, fighting for opportunities in life. So when you find your true north early enough, the rest become a little easy. Mark the word a little, because there's a lot of pain in the process. So and here I bring the warm greetings from National Bank. Because we are a historic entity, just like Kenyatta University, we are a historic entity as KCB, and we are proud to then be associated with the Kenyatta University. We began our partnership long time ago, and as I said, I'll weave in my own comments with the statements that I have to read. That relationship does work. We have one of our branches here, and the team does continue to support, but most importantly, we've worked with the HR department to make sure that students not only get to be brand ambassadors, but they also get to be interns. And I just understand that we've interned around 21 uh, in, in, in the period 2020. That commitment I've made to the Vice Chancellor that we will extend those opportunities to be a lot more. <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's when you start getting that opportunity to experience, is when you start refining what I talked about, your true north and what you stand for. But as I also always say, and I'll probably repeat later, 
and, and Professor had already touched on, 50% is what you get into when, when you get into Kenyatta University. But I think there is a lot that you are not taught in the academic class that Kenyatta University is bridging in this session. We want to be the partners to fill the other 50% with, 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 with the management. Now, when, when I reflected about coming here, and not only representing KCB and NBK, but representing myself. I couldn't stop by reflecting when I was the chairman of what was then called Bubmesa. I think they must have changed it by now, which was more University Business Management Student Association. And the best of the experiences, what we looked for, forward to, was that one single day when we look for one speaker, one to come and speak to us. And I look at Kenyatta University, you've had a whole week. And you've had all the organizations that professors mentioned. I look back at that point, and I was hoping for three things every single time. I don't know what you're hoping for over the week. One was ability to try and see people who have succeeded who are in certain roles and calibrate and check whether I am in the right direction of travel. You are just trying to benchmark yourself and say, if that is, then Coca-Cola and still is, was one of the massive employers, if that is the sales manager for Coca-Cola and that's an aspirational organization, what is in it that am I doing or that I can see I have that looks like is in that person? And what do I see in that person that I need to shape up? And I'm not preaching here that you should be exactly, there is value in diversity and I'm an HR professional, but there has to be humility to correctly benchmark early in your life. I then start again saying, then if I'm going to benchmark, but I must also say, what is that person going to say that I need to do different? And most importantly, I look forward to that session all the time because it brought many of us together and somehow we became more friends and more colleagues in, in, in the campus setup. And in that way, you are able also to compare with your own colleagues. Now, I was asked to talk about the future of work. As, as just look at the future of work and try and compare with my own story. And, and I think it's important for me to just highlight, uh, again, I know I'm in, in an institution of education of high repute, so you just don't come and say anything and, and pretend and walk away. It's important to understand that the future of work is trying to project what is going to change in work, what is going to change in workers, and what is going to change in the workplace. And if, if, if that topic, which is extremely relevant even now in the COVID period and in the post-COVID period, you have to examine yourself first as a worker, a potential worker, but you must also examine yourself about the work that you want to do. But also, if you get work, you must work with the organization to change the workplace. Which then brings a bigger question. So what do I need to do to be able to ready? Because it's not predictable. The future of work changes. And I put down in my notes three things little bit different worded from what was in the report. One is critical thinking, ability to just be able to think hard, apply your mind. And I know Mr. Google is spoiling students. To the extent that you have a, a, a phone that is as powerful as a computer, instead of wanting to go to the library and do a hard research, and have no problem in Googling, The future of work needs critical thinking and a true application of our minds. 
A second bit that I wanted to mention, and I will weave in my own personal, personal experience, is problem solving. If, if you're not going to look for solutions, those works whose solutions are provided are actually being replaced as we speak, isn't it? A number of them have been replaced. So in the future, you'll be paid, you'll be asked, you'll be brought to the table because you can critically think and look for a solution. And I think the other point that I wanted to say is you then have to be able to be a decision maker. So you think critically, you think about solution, but you make a call. And I hope you see the, the connection. If, if you're going to be a decision maker, you don't need for something to be 100% perfect. You get to 80% speed to market, you take the risk. 20%, you fix it as you go. Now, I was asked by Prof, so what are some of the things that have made, you know, you get to this place and, uh, you know, as you think about future of work? And one of the things that I really want you to remember is you don't need to be old to identify, as I said, your true north, but to identify some things that you will fight for. And early enough in my career, and I stood in the shoulders of giants because, as I said, I didn't have uh, parents who went to school. You stand on the shoulders of giants, but you stand and believe in something. So ask your neighbor, what do you stand for? Amo unawangoja tu, masomo ikisha, weo uko na mishoni. You have something else to do, some fun. You have to stand and fight for something. And the first thing you need, really need to fight for, and for me, that was very revealing. You, every single individual has their, 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 their what they fight for. Was I really did not want to waste, ignore my parents for now, I did not want to waste the contribution of the people that educated me. So typically you go to a primary school, anybody from Lysamis primary here, you go to primary school, you don't pay a shilling, the Catholic church pays for you, you just need to go to church and read. Maybe that's how I became a Catholic. But you gotta do something for those people. You have to fight back for those people. And the second, and I'm sharing personal ex ex examples, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, just for, is, is, is as you struggle, and many of you will struggle to pay school fees, some people will come through for you. Same happened for me in more university. Somehow, I end up training some women in Samburu called Umoja Women Group every Saturday and Sunday to be paid. I have to fight for those people. That's one basket. But also you need to then start saying, and you discover as you go. You discover as you go. Because remember in your career, things will change. And today, the skill durability and career longevity changes. If you paid attention in my CV, <laughs> there's a point where I worked only for six months. Many of you, if you take the theory of HR, which I'm a professional of, you probably will struggle to hire me. I took risks. You go to a job, you achieve HR officer for Kera Bank, six months, you resign. People think when well, was him. But it's about making a call on whether that is what is suitable for you at that point. So I took risks because I knew at the end of the point that skill durability and that career longevity, I might not have used those terms, were going to be relevant for me in future. 
And probably is the only reason why I've moved from HR to become to be a managing director. So I challenge you to be able to embrace the fluidity of modern work environment. I think if you go to the work environment as you pursue what you're doing, and I truly admire the guys who perform, the guys who take extracurricular events, the guys who choose to MC. You will know the value of those experiences when you go to an interview. Some of you, if you're given a microphone today, you will fall here and you probably look for an emergency ambulance. <laughs> but the day that person, when you come for interviews, you are in the same class, you start wondering, but Mbona wali chupo ule jama, the MC guy on a three piece. Well done. Because the person is able to express themselves and make a choice, isn't it? Wewe ulikula vitabu, you are an A student, it's fine, but you can't even reproduce. When you ask the question, eh? Eh? But that guy, because he has spent his time both in class and balancing it here, and well done again. The person is able to holistically express themselves. If you saw the guys who are singing, and Carol, our retail director, is here. Most of the guys who serve you in the bank did not do become. <laughs> Most did not do become, let me tell you. Maybe some of them are there. They were in the arts, Bachelor of Anything. <laughs> Why? No, I did. If you look at my CV, my, my degree was Bachelor of Arts Business Management. So the Bachelor of Anything, we're in the right place. Don't worry. <laughs> right? It's because they go out and build holistic selves. And not just academics. I'm not telling you leave out academics. Right? They spent their time. They come here. They actually offer to perform. It requires courage. It requires confidence, isn't it? It requires boldness. But most importantly, it requires passion. You wait. Those, the lessons you learn, the ability to express yourself, the ability to articulate your point. The guy of Kiswahili, I know many of us don't want even to be associated with, you know, Kiswahili. Ngelia Kivi, I have no idea what, but, but, but I can assure you, the lessons are right in front of you. Then the career week gives you the opportunity to experience those lessons right in front of yourself. So you wait to be entertained, but that person is actually practicing. <laughs> it's your choice. So you have to make a personal decision. That because, as I said, skills, durability, as well as career long, has shortened. You have to try and explore and do a lot more. But the most that you have to work on is yourself. And therefore, let me touch on two critical, critical ones so that you see why the Kiswahili guy was actually practicing. One of the most important things you will need is adaptability and agility. Now, if you had not done all crazy things, don't do those other crazy things. I'm saying the things you consider crazy in out here. How would you know how to adapt? In fact, some of you might be shocked. In Mangwa High School, I was actually in choir. Now, just try and understand, how can I sing with my voice? <laughs> I still ask myself what I was doing there. I don't even know how teacher, teacher Suchi, I think at some point she was in KU, both as a student and there was also a lecture. I don't even know how she placed my voice somewhere, but I was there. <clears throat> and my voice is as it is. 
24-7-365. Maybe that's the reason why Mang Wai School Choir never won. <laughs> but at least I showed up. I showed up. Adaptability and agility requires you to do what? Show up. You'll fix the rest. No one was born perfect. They say, luck is when what? Preparedness meets opportunity, isn't it? Sasa itakukuta wapi kama uko kwa mangoma. Where is it? Oh, you have to be present, isn't it? And only when you are present is when you can adapt, isn't it? The other item that I wanted to mention is that because skill sets change, because skill sets change, you have to keep reinventing yourself. And I think it's, 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 it's very paramount for me to articulate and say, and I think it was Professor Jason Foreman that said that work as a future but no, no one knows what it is. And therefore, you have to keep reinventing yourself. And I'd say to Vice Chancellor that I will say this. If you doubt yourself, just look out for people that you can ask yourself, if they did it, why can't I? And because as leaders we are very vulnerable, sometimes it's difficult to share our own personal examples. But I've always told people I'm not an A student. I'm a very good B student. But I chose to say I'll go to where A students go. Somebody say amen. amen. Right? You don't have to be an A student, right? But you got to go to where the A students go. So come on, enter university, we'll enter university. If you have to beat them in class, you beat. If they are going to be management trainees, you become a management. Because there's enough for all of us, isn't it? And I just remember vividly as I, as I speak here. Because about, I was told, don't do these theories. Make sure you speak about things that people can relate with. So I hope I'm Jalala. The, the point, I think one thing that just, uh, pro, uh, I think Prof must have seen it, Akasema, Ikitu Nikosabu, it associated to be a watch and is mentioned. But I became a management trainee in breweries. Allow me to share this example. <coughs> I was busy teaching in Songa Primary School in Matsadu. You know, you finish campus, you realize, ah, the best thing to go and do is what? Rudi Nyumbani Ujaribu Kwat, UT. And I remember very well, you know, you guys are very lucky nowadays. Tulikuwa tunalipo maindi na maragwe. I remember vividly. Mujo Amwezi had teacher and Fatia Mahindi na Maharagwe. You take a gunia and a gunia unapeleka nyumbani. And uh, me, my dad was very proud. May he rest in peace. Very proud. Very. And I know why. And at that point, my aspiration was to be a teller of KCB in Marsabit branch. Nothing more. Nothing more. I've written this. It's been written. Why? Because they used to wear ties. It was one of the only Land Rovers other than the DC Land Rover in Marsabit that walikuwa napata gazeti. Very important. Then that, that, that call 
to come and interview for managing management trainees in breweries changed my life. So I got onto a lorry, if you allow me just to finish this example. There used to be a BP petrol station, Prof, you might remember, these guys are too young to remember, just as you enter breweries. So the lorry stopped there, the guy said to me, Baba, ulugo na kuja breweries, yeah. Inakuwaka pandei. Na ulisema unaenda interview, yeah. All the best. The only thing I had was prayers from those guys, prayers from the entire village. You know the way the village prays for you. <laughs> the rest is history. Let me cut the story. That was the beginning of the transformation of my career. Later, I wanted to be a DC simply because the most senior guy in our community was a DC. So life in your careers will change, things will change. But you need to believe in yourself. Finally, I think I'm over, overstaying my welcome. As you do what you're doing, please understand that technology is getting at the heart of everything you do. Even as you pursue art, technology is influencing how art is delivered. This is if you are pursuing become, if you are in medicine, technology is changing. So with all the stories I've given you, you have to make sure that you embrace technology and you take a role in technology. We've seen, for example, what it has done to, work, to our workplaces during COVID. I think at some point, we realized that we could actually work with 30% of our staff. Thank God we didn't lay out any staff. But what was important, in fact, for banking, I dare give this example. For a long time, people said, you cannot give people access to banking system wakiwa kwao. COVID akatokeze akasema, try me. Bankers, we gave people access to systems in, in their own houses. For a long time, until COVID, you could not access a bank system away from workplace. And people were able to work. I just want to, 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 to tell you, today, for example, 98% of transactions for the entire KCB are happening outside the branch. Now that has to, uh, you have to ask yourself, so what is my future? What is my role? What am I going to do? And I think if you see, e-commerce is going to be a big thing. We've seen, for sure, technology, the call for people on technology is becoming big. We've seen actually the role of social media in terms of advertising for roles and opportunities. But above all, the role of the person in the new space, even with technology, changes. So as I come to a close to my statement, is you need to define yourself and say, because all of us, and I'll use this as an example, you are no different from a product in a supermarket. So for you in blue, I would imagine you are homo. For you in white, probably imagine you are parcel, right? And maybe for you in green, I'll say you are pangaso. <laughs> right? So for every person that is seated next to you, Assume there are products. All of you are in shelves in a supermarket. Please ask yourself, why should somebody pick you? Why should somebody buy you, not the person next? Wewe ni mwosho moja. Ngine mkono wa mkono, isn't it? 
mwingine ni <laughs> yeah inadumu sana panga so it, it, it's your choice if you don't work on that product that is on the shelf i can assure you you will always ask a question why is the other person progressing better than me it's because that person spent a lot of time working on the product which is themselves working on the packaging are we together and finding the right position in the shelf why are some products kept in some funny places in the shelf they don't move fast so the products that are given priority location in the shelf listen to me and by the way it doesn't change it once you get into the workplace unapata products zingine so you are a product here in university when you get into car, into job unapata product kama karo sasa karo amejingarisha let's say karo is which one give karo a product maybe ariel or let's say geisha for this time yeah are we together you will find you are panga so pulikuwa unadumu sana sio you will find geisha which is multipurpose so you have to reinvent yourself are we together and at the heart of every single of those things i'm telling you maybe you'll wonder later where is this guy going and i'll tell you it's just because every single day in life you have to discover every, at the heart of it is self discipline and that's why i want to close as a heart as you work on that product as you brand that product as you work out yourself as you work towards your true north at the heart of it is self discipline so here is my personal invitation find your true north shape it up but keep discipline to the core Thank you very much happy to interact with yourself thank you prof and team for for inviting me and if you don't find your uh, map in the conversations of what i've said please just find yourself thank you <laughs>